Hello, I'm Professor McCoy. Today, I want to talk about another older book from the Star Wars EU. This one, uh, which explores some very interesting topics that is that have been handled, um, in my view at least, far worse uh, more recently um, by uh, by the new Disney canon uh, Star Wars stories. Uh, and that is uh, the 1994 book, The Courtship of Princess Leia by Dave Wolverton. Uh, now, uh, you may have heard of this book as the one that introduced uh, the Night Sisters of Dathomir. Um, or you may, have, uh, you may have heard of this book as the one in which C-3PO writes a pop song about Han Solo to try to annoy and or seduce Princess Leia. Um, and so you may have gotten the impression that this is a rather strange novel. And it is, actually. I, I will say up front, this is a rather odd... Uh, odd book. That doesn't mean it's not a very good one. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I, uh, being three or so years old at the time, I didn't read it when it came out. I only read it uh, relatively recently. But I actually came to like it quite a bit. And part of why, uh, part of why is that it's a, a wonderful adventure story, uh, like a lot of the Star Wars novels of the, uh, of the 90s era sort of were. But a large part of it as well is that it explores some really fascinating topics uh, in, a, uh, in a complex, nuanced, um, in a fairly novel way. What, that primarily, uh, what I'm primarily referring to here is uh, the topic of feminism and patriarchy versus matriarchy. Because The Courtship of Princess Leia introduces us to two societies which become incredibly important for Star Wars history moving forward. Uh, those being the Witches of Dathomir and the Hapes Consortium. Both of these are primarily matriarchal societies, but they're matriarchal in very different ways. And so Wolverton uses these two societies as contrasts with each other to explore different ways in which a matriarchal society might function, and then also, as a sort of reflection of that, uh, a kind of analysis or critique on how our societies function uh, as uh, either egalitarian and or patriarchal or some combination thereof. So I want to look at these um, as they're depicted in the book and later Star Wars media, um, more so than, than what we see now, because <clears throat> um, as you might know, the the Night Sisters of Dathomir, the, the witches of Dathomir that we see now in modern Disney Star Wars, uh, bear very little resemblance to the witches of Dathomir uh, that were originally put forward by Wolverton in 1994. Um, the original witches of Dathomir were simply humans. Uh, they were human descendants of a crashed ship uh, that, uh, in order to survive, uh, primarily their women uh, of, the, of these survivors learned to use the Force, but they learned to use the Force in a very uh, juvenile way, for, again, reasons that are made clear in the book, um, in a very, uh, very primitive, very tribalistic sort of way. And this shaped the development of their society, with the women of society having this, 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 what they saw as a magical power, they very, uh, very quickly uh, became the dominant force in that society over the years. Men were relegated to a subservient role within society. Now, it would be easy to do something with this that would make, uh, that would make it a kind of inversion of uh, traditional patriarchal society where the roles of men and women are inverted just as the power structures might be but that actually is not the case what we still see in uh in this dathomiri society is that the men of the society even though they are an underclass even though uh in a lot of cases they're even slaves they remain the providers for the society they still work the fields, they still hunt, they still gather, they still do the work that is uh, traditionally in sort of tribal societies associated with the masculine rather than the feminine. And so what we have is a, an inversion of power relationships, but not an inversion of symbolic relationships. Although, of course, the, with that power dynamic, some of those power relationships get in, uh, some of those social relationships get inverted. But not in the, the the sort of traditional symbolic way. We don't have the men who are you know taking care of the home or the or uh, these or uh, or you know 
making and weaving or whatever, whatever you might associate with the, the feminine tasks of a tribal society, because it is very much a tribal society. This is a, uh, this is a, a very low technology level society on, on Dantooine. And so what we wind up with is an exploration of what a matriarchal society might look like, given uh, a particular reason for why the women of a given society would become dominant. Now we take to a contrast point. Another matriarchal society portrayed uh, in Courtship of Princess Leia, that being the other suitor courting Princess Leia, that is Prince Isolder of the Hapes Consortium. The Hapes Consortium is another primarily matriarchal society, but it's matriarchal in a very high and sophisticated way. Uh, the, the Hapes Consortium is portrayed as being roughly on a technological par with the New Republic at the time, uh, though with some technological divergences because they're relatively isolationist. They're a small group of 70-so-odd planets in an isolated part of the galaxy, and they, they, uh, they were settled there uh, originally hundreds and hundreds of years ago, perhaps even thousands of years ago, during the Old Republic by a group of pirates. Uh, these were primarily male pirates, as pirate crews often tend to be. But when they settled these worlds, they would, when they went off on their piratical expeditions, they tended to leave their women behind. And then further, um, as, uh, as part of what they would often capture in their act of piracy, they would bring more women back um, in, in you know, a piratical sort of way. But because they were out, they were doing their uh, they were doing their their work, so to speak. They left society back home to be managed, and then ultimately, eventually, over the, again over the centuries, ruled by women. And so, what we have developed here is a matriarchal society, somewhat along the lines of what some scholars um, maybe fancifully speculate um, happened with uh, with uh, certain societies in our history. Uh, where the men would go off to war for extended periods of time, things like Viking society. Uh, now, of course, this is this is uh, a this is a sort of exaggeration of those trends that we see in our history, uh, because again, this is extended over centuries and centuries, and possibly even millennia, um, where this society is sort of left to develop in this manner for a, for a very long time, and so we get a kind of uh, kind of metastasis of this process. What we see is a society that is ruled by women, but the men are still warriors. They're specifically warriors. They're, unlike the Daph Mary society, they're not really providers. Uh, the men of Hapen society are really only outward facing. Women are seen as the domestic rulers, the rulers of the Hapes consortium, of the collection of worlds, whereas the men are the defense at the barrier. They tend to crew starships. They tend to uh, to fight now, now fight pirates and fend off at this stage, uh, fend off uh, the incursions by the Imperial Remnant and uh, prevent the pre prevent the consortium from being simply annexed by the New Republic. But you'll note that the main Hapen character that we were introduced to is not a princess, not a queen but a prince. We do, of course, get to meet uh, the, uh, what's known, the, the female ruler of the Hapes Consortium, known as the Queen Mother. Um, but her heir is a son. That's Princess Older. And in order for him to take the throne, to rule the Hapes, he needs to marry a, a woman of high, of high social status, who will then become the new Queen Mother of Hapes. And he, of course, has his eyes set on Princess Leia, former princess of Alderaan, current chief of state. No, no, not chief of state at the time. Sorry, I misspoke. That was Mon Mothma at the time. But current high-ranking member of the New Republic, the current ruling galactic government. And so he, again, he as, as the male, as the man who is specifically in the Hapen society not charged with rulership, he has no real power. Uh, over Hapen society. He commands his troops on his ships as a warrior, but he has no political power back home. That's entirely uh, in, in the domain of his mother 
and will eventually fall to uh, the complete control of his wife. However, the point is made by the Queen Mother um, and sort of agreed upon uh, by, uh, by Princess Holder later in the novel that the men of Hapes, the royal men, the men of the royal line of Hapes at least, have a certain power that shouldn't be discounted. And that is the ability to select and then subsequently to raise the next rulers of the Hapes Consortium. And so the implication here is, of course, that Princess Older does not, is not going to rule himself. The man, it would be inappropriate for him to do so in this, in this matriarchal Hapen society. However, it is his responsibility, his duty, and his power to select the woman who will rule. And then, if, if he has a daughter, to raise the one who will rule. Or if he has a son, he winds up having a daughter. But if he had a son, to raise the one who would select the next ruler as well. And so this is a, a, a very close parallel to a kind of power that women have possessed in patriarchal societies in our own history. Women, when they, when they were excluded from political power in the past, and in the present, to be fair, in, in some cases, or what have you, but in, in heavily patriarchal societies where women are, are excluded from formal roles of power, it's important to note that they never were fully excluded from power as such. They always had access to the reins of power through the men who had the reins of power. Just like we see with Princess Older having, ultimately, a real and significant say in the rulership of the Hapes Consortium. And this is followed through in, uh, in the later novels that feature Hapes, where he has significant political authority, all of which is through his wife and later his daughter. But the authority is really there. It really is significant. But it's, a, but it's a kind of influence. It's a power of influence rather than command. And so we see in this version, in the Hapen society, rather than the Dathomiri society, which, which maintained a sort of symbolic masculine and feminine, the Hapen society is significantly more of a symbolic inversion, where it isn't merely the political roles of men and women that are inverted, but... but the way that they interact with each other is also largely inverted as well. I think that's, that may be simply because it's a more advanced society, it's a more developed, excuse me, developed society, but it's hard to say. Now, I, uh, like I said, I really enjoy this book primarily because it gives us a look at the topic of feminism and patriarchy and matriarchy and, and social, uh, social relationships between men and women in a way that is not, uh, not, simply and straightforwardly an expression of our current political climate, but has things to say about our own society and our own history. But it says those things indirectly, it says those things within its own context, rather than simply dragging our own real contemporary political context into the world of, into the world of fantasy that we want to be, you know, we want to be transported away into when we read or watch or listen to Star Wars. And so I think that this is doing a kind of political commentary, doing it very well, because it does so by, in a way that science fiction is, has always been exceptionally good at, of creating its own world, significantly different from our own, but different in interesting ways looking at the differences of this, this created, or we might say sub-created society, looking how it's different from our own, but looking at where the parallels or reflections might be so we can see ourselves like it's in a mirror rather than simply seeing ourselves on the screen, plainly and straightforwardly, like, like a lot of more ham-fisted kinds of political commentaries might get, uh, especially within the last decade or so. In any case, um, it's, a good, it's another good book, uh, it is, this is, I will say, not one that I had uh, quite planned on doing a video on just yet uh, in this series, but here it is. Um, and in fact, I will say, the reason I uh, moved this up in my schedule uh, was because I happened across uh, the, uh, the 
uh, the AI augmented ability to uh, to produce a bit of nonsense for you. So uh, I will leave with that. I will say farewell. I will say see you in the next uh, our next discussion. Uh, and until then, enjoy this. Princess's dream He's got his own planet Although it's kind of wild Wookiees love him, women love him He's got a winning smile Though he may seem cool and cocky He's more sensitive than he seems Oh, Solo, what a man Solo, he's every princess's dream He's got his own planet Although it's kinda wild Wookiees love him, women love him He's got a winning smile Though he may seem cool and cocky He's more sensitive than he seems Oh, Solo, what a man Solo, he's every princess's dream